As a long time Final Fantasy XI player, I've been here before, I'm not gonna lie. But is this where I finally start to like World of Warcraft? Guys, every expansion that comes out, I follow the same process. I get overly hyped by new cutscenes, new features, new classes, new areas, all the stuff that comes with a new expansion for World of Warcraft, and they hook me every time. I've never really been a World of Warcraft guy. Every once in a while, I'll play the new expansions, I'll play for a month or two, I get excited, and then I kind of fall off like everything else, and I fall back to my old stable Final Fantasy XI. Part of the issue though, and there's no denying this for me, has always been the leveling experience. It's been kind of a mess for the past, I don't know, while. Leveling and all was, was confusing, miserable, and boring. I would get the core of my abilities, the, the abilities that make the class fun very early on so that not much really would change about what I would do, do on a fight to fight basis for like the rest of the leveling experience. And I would bounce around between different expansions, not really understanding what's going on from a narrative perspective. There's no context. NPCs are alive and then they're dead because I'm hopping between time and then they're, they're dead and they're back to life and I don't really understand what's going on. So for the most part, when I get a new expansion, yes, I admit it, I would take advantage of their level boost up to the level cap, play through the new expansion with a character I hadn't tried before, and then I'd fall off. I'd get uninterested eventually and I would stop playing. Because for me, leveling alts, changing classes, learning the game by exploring the different facets of how players can approach it is one of the things that I love about MMOs. It's how I play them. But because I thought the leveling experience in World of Warcraft was so disjointed and confusing, I always kind of turned away from it. So when I would get bored with my class at the level cap, whatever we're doing, I would just stop playing instead of changing like I do with a lot of other games. So why, knowing all that, would anything be different this time? Well, to be honest, I'm not even sure I'm all that excited for the new expansion itself. I mean, sure, returning players are both excited and concerned about various features and aspects and changes that are coming with Shadowlands, and that's awesome. Story-wise, things seem to be taking an interesting turn too, so, so that's cool, but it's not what's pulling me back. Nope, for me, it all came down to the stat and level squish that came with the pre-patch that went live this week, and all the leveling changes that came along with it. We finally got to check it out this week on stream, and frankly, it was fantastic. Uh, speaking of which, if you didn't know, we do stream every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Definitely stop by, let's chat about this. I want to know your thoughts. Is this enough to bring you back into World of Warcraft? Have you ever played before? Was this keeping you away? Or uh, is it not going to change a thing? Anyways, for anybody wholly unfamiliar, the changes that came out this week all boil down to these essential features. There's a new introductory area that takes you from level 1 to 10. Uh, it's pretty cool, it's brand spanking new, so all the shiny new graphical features and adjustments that they've made over the years uh, to leveling pacing, quest pacing, overall area design, enemies that you fight, it's all new. And whatever you want to say about WoW, they have certainly continued to improve all of that over the years with each expansion, for the most part. It explains the basic of how WoW, and in general, MMO gaming works. And like I said, it's brand new, it's flashy, it's got some unique flair for whatever class you happen to be playing, to sort of give you a core idea of, of how you're supposed to play the role. It's great for new players that have either played games before or not, and frankly, I think a much needed update for the overall starting racial experience, because honestly, a lot of the racial starting zones were getting a little bit dated. It was kind of tough when you, you've got this brand new expansion, you're all excited to level and, and experience that game, and you're thrust into like a 10-year-old zone that hasn't really been updated in a while. You can still do that if that was like your nostalgic love of, of World of Warcraft. That's totally fine, it's still there. But if you'd rather a more streamlined, immediate experience, they've introduced this new uh, storyline and flow, and it's, it's, it's pretty good. From there, you can choose whether or not you want to hop into the latest expansion. The storyline will take you right through all the starting quests that will lead you to Battle for Azeroth, which led up to the Shadowlands expansion that's launching you know, next month. I think they're thinking here is, you know, Battle for Azeroth is the most latest expansion, both from a story content perspective and just general delivery of quest lines and game mechanics, so it'll get you most prepped narratively and gameplay wise for what's coming in Shadowlands. A lot of people weren't super happy with Battle for Azeroth, but I don't want that to scare you off. It really wasn't the leveling experience that I think most people complained about, but more the end game grinds and, and how they chose to implement end game in that expansion. But that wouldn't have got me excited. I just played Battle for Azeroth. That was the expansion that I bought most recently and played through. I like, I don't want to do it again. 
More importantly is the time walking feature where you can pick an expansion and just warp your reality to that time and place in World of Warcraft and level through that expansion's story content and zones. No more confusing narratives where NPCs are like alive than dead or they're missing and then they're back and you talk to somebody and they talk about events that haven't happened yet and then you go talk to somebody else and, and they're remembering a situation that you never even planned to do. It's just the flowing narrative that World of Warcraft frankly is so well known for when they don't lose their way with all the the overall storyline that kind of can fumble sometimes between patches and expansions. I've been trying to follow World of Warcraft lore and there's a there's a lot of retcons that make it a little bit confusing. But yeah, then whatever expansion you pick, I mean you can change it whenever, this isn't like set in stone, but you could level from 10 to 50, which is the current cap underneath the new Shadowlands expansion cap, in that expansion, never leaving. And I did say level 50 because that's the other point I mentioned, the level squish. We're back to the 60 cap for, for the upcoming expansion of Shadowlands, and along with that, a stat squish has brought everything down to more manageable numbers again, both from the stats on your character and gear, which I think is, is huge. That was always a favorite part of Final Fantasy XI for me, that like by endgame, five strength was like a huge deal. Now, I think the numbers still go up a lot higher than that. I mean, even my early gear has like five strength, but the damage you'll be doing at cap is gonna be a more manageable number, like in the hundreds or thousands not 60 billion for standard hit. So overall, a much simpler leveling experience that actually promotes the previous stories of WoW, which is something I kind of missed out on. Uh, I hopped in briefly during like Burning Crusade or Wrath of the Lich King, I forget which expansion I, I started my World of Warcraft experience. But I never really got to those expansions because I was mostly just leveling through the original zones before I kind of fell off and got uninterested and went back to World of Warcraft. And you know, went back to Final Fantasy XI. So when people talk about zones and areas and dungeons, I, I never played any of those. And now I finally have a chance to in a fun way with a character that I'm leveling. I'm actually enjoying it. It's not just like I went to the dungeon to see what it was like. It's a smoother starting experience for new players. Frankly, like myself, I consider myself a new WoW player because of how little I've really dabbled when it comes down to it. WoW had just gotten too big. It's been, it's been so many years, so many expansions that flow linearly into each other from a leveling perspective, but narratively, questionably, <laughs> sometimes. And because of how fast leveling speed was, sometimes you'd out-level whole expansions just trying to hop around and like keep up with what level you had made it to. But that's not the best part. The best part is the scaling. The scaling is awesome. Wow had introduced level scaling, I think a couple years ago, in the, the, the leveling zones where you could level in any zone that you chose if you'd reached the, the minimum level that you needed to, to be in that zone. All the content, all the quests, all the dungeons, I don't know about dungeons, all the quests would scale to your appropriate level and you could level in that zone without worrying about what level specifically you were. It was a great change and allowed you to experience World of Warcraft in whatever order you wanted without worrying about necessarily having to go to a specific zone at certain times. The big change now, at least for me, if this was happening before, it either wasn't communicated well or I just didn't realize it, is that every player in your party scales independently. Meaning that I could play as a level 15 paladin with my little brother who's playing as a level 30 hunter. Running through the Warlords of Draenor expansion, doing the same quests, both earning valuable experience and valuable rewards gear-wise from those quests, at the same time in the same party. This is something we have struggled with for years because he always outlevels me. He always manages to just burn through stuff faster than I am. He's a better gamer than I am. And we'd play like that first night when like we'd both resub or an expansion would come out and then he would drift further and further from me and I could never seem to catch up. He was twice my level and we were doing quests, dungeons, both getting cool gear we were excited about, both leveling, earning new spells and ability. It was fantastic and the experience I've honestly always wanted. We were having a blast and never once worrying, have we out leveled the content? Has one of us, you know, gotten too strong or too weak for the area that we've made it into? Uh, is somebody not getting good quest rewards? Is somebody not getting gear? None of that. We just played the game. And with how fast leveling was in modern WoW, even before these changes, and I think it's faster now, the difference between 
one hour, two hours of playtime, if somebody just got a little bit ahead of you, kept going just a little bit longer one night when you went to sleep, was drastic. They could be five to 10 levels ahead of you by the time you come back for almost no time at all. And while that's cool, it's also really frustrating if you're like, ah, well, I, I would love to level with you, but there's too much of a gap. Final Fantasy XI always used to have this problem too before the level sync was introduced. But the difference was it took you so long to level, even if you played like a whole extra day, you might only be a level or so ahead. And you could probably still party while the other person then caught up on a day that you're not available. In WoW, I always felt like immediately we were out of sync and couldn't play together. But now that's no longer a problem. This was a huge difference maker for me, and I have no idea what the actual expansion, which I have not purchased yet, holds in store for us. But all of a sudden, I'm very excited about the concept of leveling alts, maybe going to do the quests for the allied races now, which are a thing from Battle for Azeroth, new versions of a lot of the older races that you couldn't get without crazy rep grinds and stuff. But that reputation grind is no longer there for those allied races. You just have to do the quest, which I wouldn't have cared about anyway, because I didn't want to level any alts because the experience was so miserable. But now, it's not. But like I said, I don't know what the new expansion holds for us or whether or not it'll actually be fun. People seem to be both excited and concerned, like I said, about various uh, features in equal measure. There's, there's positives and negatives on all sides. Frankly, I don't know enough about Modern WoW to know which way I'm leaning anyway. But I'm having fun leveling, and that's not something I've been able to say about the World of Warcraft experience for me uh, in many years, if ever. But I want to hear your thoughts. Uh, is this something that you're excited for? I've seen other games do this, like Guild Wars 2 attempted something similar, Elder Scrolls Online. Or does it kill the overall experience that people were missing from something like Classic WoW, which is a little bit more hardcore of a delineation between the levels that you are? Let me know. Definitely stop by the stream if you haven't to, to chat about it there or leave a message in the comments below. And otherwise, I'll see you guys all in the next one. Happy gaming. Peace out. Bye. It's me. <laughs> Wait, how did I die? <laughs> Here, grab, grab, the, <laughs> grab the video camera to you on the ground. <laughs> I can't get to anything if you want. I can't if I can green screen that. Oh god, I must be able to do it somehow. <laughs>